It's a really cool uh, gig because you get to practice on your listening skills with three guitar players, you know what I mean? Being able to play off of each other and finding the right space and the right tone so that we won't clash and so that everything works together. So it's, I like the idea of the orchestration of the guitars in, in his music, so it's really cool. I definitely came into it very sure of my guitar choices, but like he would say, like the Grateful Dead stuff, he'd talk about the groove and, and there were a lot of times where I have to really slow down and go, okay, I'm not, I, I think I'm getting this, but I'm, I'm not really. I'm gonna go shed some more, and then tomorrow at the next rehearsal, hopefully he'll notice that I shed. And usually he did. He's like, okay, that's it. That's the vibe. Mm -hmm. And it'd be su he's a, a king of subtlety in that regard. Like, you know, they're just you just have those moments where you look across the stage and you're like, oh, I know what he's about to do. And you know, there's just like sort of conversations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that go on. So one thing I really like about John Mayer beside his music and guitar playing is his ability to put together amazing bands for every single tour he does. And one notable feature of his bands is the consistent use of three guitars. In this video, I would like to explore how they arrange guitar and explain to you why they're responsible for some of the best guitar arrangements in live music history, in my opinion. So I've picked three live performances to deconstruct in this video. And I wanted to start with a performance of the song Wild Blue. This song has a really cool feature in the solo that I'm sure not many people have noticed, and it's the fact that Isaiah Sharkey during John's solo, by the way, notice that John actually always plays the original solo of the record, and there's a reason for that, uh, and it's because Isaiah Sharkey doubles certain notes of the solo with a Leslie sound, a reverberated Leslie sound. So for this video, I had fun re-recording and isolating some of those guitar parts. I, I put them together and I'm only using bass and drums in the mix. Only bass, drums and the three guitars so that we can really hear them. And what I've done is I've also pushed the two rhythm guitars a little bit more in the mix. You'll get John Mayer in the center, Isaiah Sharkey on the left and David Ryan Harris on the right. doubling trick is really really cool it's something that it's almost like orchestration level and I'm a really big fan of orchestral music and if you study orchestral music that's something that you can do a lot because there's a lot of colors you can play with and uh, it's super common to use certain other instruments to double other other parts as a sort of accenting thing to create a sort of contrast between the parts. I've actually dug up an example here from one of my favorite composers called Aaron Copland and in one of his pieces called uh, Appalachian Spring. In this piece there's like a very famous upbeat violin line that's doubled, only certain notes are doubled by the xylophone. You know, it just gives that emphasis to certain notes. And in the solo, if we go back to John Mayer, uh, doubling certain notes of the solo give them a different weight and a different color and makes the solo even more dynamic. And I'm sure not many people have noticed that when uh, listening to the song or checking out live arrangements, but it's just something that I wanted to highlight in one really cool feature of that song. Okay, so the next song I wanted to check out is the song Vultures. And Vultures is very interesting because at its core, it can work with just three instruments. You know, we know John actually likes to play that song a lot as a trio, and the song works really well with just the main guitar riff bass and drums, right? You don't need much more. So, and in fact, that, that main riff is so minimal and important that anything else that would get in the way of that riff would be a problem uh, to the integrity of the song. So what's interesting is that basically what we have, when you've got three guitars, it's actually quite a common way to work with them is one of the extra guitars is going to play some supportive rhythmic stuff to the main riff. You know, you'll have your main guitar that will play probably the main rhythmic riff. Then you'll have some support by another guitar, some rhythmic support. And then a third guitar, what it can do is some textural work. So what we've got in this song is actually David Ryan Harris playing some rhythmic stuff. And David Ryan Harris is playing very minimal, playing single note stuff in a much lower register. He doesn't want to get, he's basically an octave down 
from John because he doesn't want to uh, he doesn't want to get in the way of the main riff. And then Robbie McIntosh, what he's doing is he's playing swells using a very cool, like distorted sound with some reverb. to just give that little push underneath and that little texture underneath, almost like a, a, a synth pad almost. And um, what's cool about this is, is due to the kind of modal nature of the song, is that he can play some very interesting voicings, especially when it's time to accompany John Mayer's solo. So that's something I wanted to highlight here. So that's amazing stuff so far. And the third song I wanted to have a look at is Helpless. Amazing guitar parts in this song. I love the rhythm guitar part that John is playing in this song. It's really cool. Uh, and I wanted to have a look at the verse into the chorus. So this time we'll have something quite rhythmic, uh, almost kind of funky. Uh, we've got some funk guitar stuff almost. And um, what I love about this is check out how minimal Isaiah Sharkey's part is. It's, it's, it's just, you know, that's the good thing about, and that's why I love bands that have loads of members, because if you've got loads of members in a band, you can have people hang. You know, you can just hang. If, if, you're, if you're a guitarist, out of three guitarists plus keyboards, you, you can just decide to hang for a bit and just play very minimal parts, just strategic, strategically placed. And what's amazing is that in those situations when you're not playing, you're actually listening. And you're listening for the right opportunity, right? The right moment where you can come in and embellish what is being played by the other players. And it becomes this little game of trying to fit in without getting in the way of anybody and really trying to be in service of the music. Now, if we jump to the chorus, we'll end up with the same situation as before, where you might have one guitarist doing more of the rhythmic support. And in that case, it's Isaiah Sharkey doing those very cool, funky single notes. And then we'll have somebody else doing something more textural. Uh, and this is what we'll have with David Ryan Harris, who this time turns on a distorted tape delay and plays, just gives chordal accents, right? Uh, it's still kind of rhythmic in that case, but it's also quite textural. So amazing work. The guitars that just work really well together and it's one of the situations where three guitars works amazingly also a cool thing about three guitars is that if john takes a solo he's got still got two guitars supporting him so that's awesome right because we, we can still have the cool interaction between two guitars during a solo which is an amazing thing uh, i think guitars are meant to be like, like the thing about guitar in a band which is why i love at least two guitars in a band because there's so much you can do with two guitars that you wouldn't be able to do with just one in terms of combining parts together. Uh, in, st in terms of also having sometimes one guitarist, just as, as we said, just wait or hang and just bring in just little colors every now and then. It's, it's a great combo. Combining guitars is amazing. And three guitars, as we're seeing here, works really well if you know what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you today, guys. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, I certainly, I hope I've encouraged you to, when you listen to John Mayer's live performances or you check out YouTube videos and whatnot, listen to the other guitar parts because they're really, really amazing. If you'd like to see more guitar deconstructions, I would suggest that you watch this video. In the meantime, take care and I will see you soon.